There was a show, Kids Say the Darndest Things, that aired on, starring Bill Cosby. The intense television program involved some of the gosh darn cutest things kids could say, led by TV darling African-American comedian Bill Cosby. Now, I haven't read much about Cosby in a few years, but presumably he's been up to his usual hijinks, starring in Leonard Part 7, promoting the Jello Pudding Pop products our apple-eyed descendants slurp down after a hot day on the jungle gym with great aplomb and fervor. However, there is one episode of Kids Say the Darndest Things that I will never watch again. And for good reason. The whole cast and crew need to wash their mouths out with soap after what I experienced. I'd give them a good seeing to this guard my mind and left a permanent scalding hot scar like hot boiling jello burning into the bottom of the pan that is my mind permanently scarring the pan that is my mind no teflon non-stick here i am damaged forever the show was presented by cbs and the intro was very very strange like what was going on one of the kids had a spider hat on and cosby was forcing him to spin a raffle spin the raffle the kid spun the raffle raffle my raffle he kept spinning the raffle spinning until the wheel broke off and flew off into the screen. Then the kid, a young African-American boy, uh, said something really, really strange. I close my eyes, but the visions and the ringing won't stop. Even when I dream, the horrors of what I've experienced become more intense. So I don't sleep. And when I don't sleep, I don't dream. To the point that I wonder if I'm already in a dream. And I can never wake up from this hell. Bill Cosby made a fish face and an audible fart noise was heard. He was wearing his traditional tuxedo and began leaping like a lizard, lifting one leg, then lifting the other leg, then lifting the other leg until it appeared he was floating because both his legs were off the ground. The tape clipped then, and I wondered why I ever rented this from Blockbust and never returned it 15 years ago to this very day. The VHS made a popping noise, and I heard the sound of sizzling like bacon but this was no breakfast no orange juice or baby sausage links were presented no merely strange television that i struggle to comprehend with my fragile mortal mind the intro music played with the man singing kids always say what they wanna uh, this was normal casual exactly what you would expect but in the next scene, Cosby was laying on the floor with open mouths where his eyes should be, and the sound of screaming was heard, blood curling screaming as he was in his underwear, white underwear screaming as leeches were all over. Drinking his blood, you could see the wounds, and God knows how he got teeth where his eyes should be. Then you see a cartoon cat enter and push the frame aside like that never happened. Who the fuck was that? What? I, I almost had a heart attack as the cat swept his palms, revealing dust winked. And the sound the roadrunner makes when he speeds off was heard as... Cosby entered in traditional tux attire, smiling, though his suit was frayed. What? Well, the show was presented as it usually was. A child sat in a chair as Cosby grilled him on the darndest things a child would say. 
Except here, the child looked angry, fuming with rage, and Cosby was slightly disheveled, sweating profusely, fumbling with note cards in his pocket. He dropped some of the note cards, revealing that instead of words, they were just Polaroids of the room he was in, with no audience visible. The camera even zoomed in on the empty seats for a few seconds. What the child said next concerned me. You're a bad man! Cosby started stuffing chewing gum in the child's mouth. A big a bulk of bigly chew! Become a gum bears and the gooey grease pies! Zippity zoppity zoop! He blew a hot raspberry loudly over the child's profuse screams as Cosby stuffed exorbitant amounts of bubblegum into overstuffed boy's cheeks, stuffing and stuffing them with bubblegum. Herbert Hancock Adolf Hitler, Simba Lion King Glam Chowder, Cabinet Corkscrew Pasta Campaign! Uh, this wasn't even his usual gibberish. This, this was just a word salad he was using to flood the room with noise. How does a bulldozer sound? Vreep! Uh, he blew hot raspberry upon raspberry, his mouth flapping, his gums a-waving, lubricating with moist Bit and flailing like a tube man with a tampon in his ass. Bill Cosby took out a piece of duct tape and slapped it on the child's mouth. Don't kids say the darndest things. He put his hands out, waving, sweating profusely. As the child wrote the words, you are a wreck in chalk on the floor before Cosby began to dance over them and mouth an air tuba, flailing his air tuba, dancing over the child's chalk. The child ripped the duct tape off and screamed, but the tape clipped when it came back. The child was on the floor, surrounded by packets of expired jello products, Cosby had apparently stuffed the child's eyes and ears with jello pudding, pudding pouring from the child's face holes as he coughed up pieces of expired pudding products, mumbling. The child was mumbling about the jello. Wugged and whipped, whipped women! Cosby started banging a cymbal and making Chinese fish faces as he circled the auditorium, no one laughing or clapping. In fact, he totally looked alone as tears started to spring forth from his eyes. Walkered and wapped a bit of He kept saying it over and over. Uh, uh, that was when security entered and demanded to know what happened with the child and all the darndest things Cosby'd been up to lately. The child coughed and wheezed as the security guard used a wet nap to clear the obstruction, dried cemented jello pudding in the eyes, ears, and other orifices of the jewel-eyed guest star. The security guard looked concerned. What happened, son? Who did this to you? Cosby was sweating profusely, fumbling with the cards, sweating and fumbling, attempting fish faces as the facade began to crack, and various plastic spiders fell out of his cheap tooks that turned out to be a Halloween costume he'd purchased at Bed Bath & Beyond. The child leered, coughing up pudding, got up on the stool, finally said the darndest thing. Cosby leered, his pupils shifting rapidly, and more rapidly as time went on. It seemed like it was taking forever for this kid to say his darndest thing. Then the camera zoomed. And the kid pointed an angry index finger at Bill Cosby, television's every man who played Dr. Huxtable on the eponymous Cosby Show sitcom. 
He pointed and pointed the finger, pointing and leering. Rapist! The child pointed, pointed straight at Bill Cosby. You're a fucking rapist! <laughs> Bill Cosby punched the child in the face. The kid fell down and slumped over unconscious. I, I couldn't believe this was happening. Never in my lifetime would I think CBS would record, air, and press to videotape something so sinister. But here it was, 1987, for all of us to see and sneer. The child was bleeding from the nose, his eyes open, as Cosby scattered ceremonial pudding packets around his newest victim. The security guard put Cosby in a headlock, detained him, and escorted him out of the empty studio. What was most strange was not the fact that this episode aired in 1987, no, years before Cosby was a household name. What was most strange was that the executive producers for this episode were Block Sybil, Goblib Sly, and Bill By Cos. These were all people that I went to high school with, and they all wore Bill Cosby masks, and even looked suspiciously like Bill Cosby.